So hi, I'm Amir. And I work at PrimeSense. So I don't know how many of you know us. We're an Israeli company. We've been around for a few years. Um, and we invented the technology that is um, powering Microsoft Kinect. So we're leaders in the field of 3D sensing and uh, natural interaction and gesture control and gesture interfaces. <coughs> so I, we actually don't like the word uh, gesture control because gesture is kind of a, uh, has a di discreet feeling to it. So we call it natural interaction because we, um, we, our technology allows you to sit in the comfort of your couch and naturally control um, your content directly. Just if you see something you want, you can go and grab it, you can manipulate it, you can touch it, you can point at it. So we're, we're enabling all this and we're leading this um, field in the world. So in this uh, short time that we have, I'd like to talk about a few things. Um, I don't know how many of you are here for the mobile part and how many are from the TV, but at the beginning of this day, I guess there were uh, some lectures from the um, uh, TV companies talking about um, directions the TVs are going and how the platforms are forming. And so I'll talk a little bit about that, but I don't want to repeat what they were saying. I'll introduce OpenNI, which is our free framework for developing applications using this technology and for um, creating um, motion games and natural interaction applications. I'll give you a, a short demonstration of how to use these tools to show you how simple and fast it is and how easy it would be to port your existing applications to use this technology and how easy it is to actually create completely new experiences with this technology. And I'll describe um, a, a service that we provide which is called OpenAI Arena, which helps you uh, showcase your developments and find potential clients and make business. So I usually show a video here, but I don't think we have enough time. <coughs> if we will, we'll go back to it. So living room. Well, we have this graph. It's not really interesting. What it's saying is that TVs are selling strong, and they are selling, and they're going on stronger, if you look at the, the latest trends. Um, and in addition to all these sales, um, TVs are becoming more than just a simple screen. They're becoming uh, connected to the internet. They're having processing power. Uh, they're running applications. They are streaming content um, from external sources and from the internet. So if you look at all, most of the leading TV makers and uh, set-up boxes and um, content providers are all uh, adding more and more functionality to their devices to make them smarter, to make them uh, more versatile. So the, each of these um, uh, fields of TVs, set-up boxes, and content are all becoming more of a platform um, in which broadcast media is only one form of entertainment you can uh, get through it. So you will soon see, I mean, this is happening right now. I'm sure all of you know you have, or you already have TVs that have application stores on them. You can download applications, you can play games, uh, you can uh, surf the net. So with all this, um, wealth of uh, content and new possibilities, you need a new input device. Because if you look at the remote control that is traditionally used to control TVs, it's, it's just not flexible enough to control the, the huge amount of content that you have right now. So a remote is good for tens or maybe hundreds of channels, but for uh, thousands or millions of movies, uh, TV shows, uh, blogs, internet, games, it's just not enough. And we will need a new input device that will allow uh, consumers to control all of this in their living room. And that is natural interaction. So we, Prime Sense, are talking with all of these leading uh, players in these fields. And all of them are incorporating this technology in various stages of, of uh, development into their products. So it's important for me to say this is, not so, I'm not, this is not a vision for the future. This is actually something that is happening right now as we speak, and you will see products this year in 2012 that are using natural interaction as their interface. I mean, even here in CES, I think you can walk around, LG is, is showing some stuff, and Samsung, some of them are based on different kinds of technology, but it is a, a very distinct trend. Um, and it, it is the way the market is going. So, oh, one last thing. Um, similar to what Bob was saying uh, before me, um, the, the input device itself or, or the, the sensor itself um, only has limited value without content. 
And if you look at the uh, mobile phones, it's the same. You have the mobile phone, but then you have a huge ecosystem of developers, of applications, um, of content, content that brings value into the system. So all of these uh, uh, TV makers and um, set-up boxes will all be coming to the development community to look for content to um, raise the value for their products. So they will actually be coming to you, uh, hopefully, to, um, uh, to get your applications bundled with their products, and that is a big opportunity for you. And some of you may be coming from the uh, mobile area. So again, the, the trend that's happening right now is that the market is going to a uh, unified uh, platform sort of system where the, they will be using the same or similar hardware and um, operating systems on uh, phones, on tablets, and also soon on TVs. So the same experience and, and tools that you're familiar with uh, creating applications either for mobile or for tablets or for um, other platforms, you can use the same experience and tools on your TV with our system. So how do you create applications using this technology? You use something called OpenNI, which is an open source framework, and it, which is completely free for commercial use. It is backed, uh, it, it's actually a separate organization from PrimeSense, but it is backed by us and a few other companies. It's open source, it's multi-platform. It runs on Windows, Linux, Android, and Mac OS. Um, it will also support, right now we are the only uh, sensor available for consumers, but if other sensors are entered into the market, it will also support them, so it's completely open, it's not something that is uh, tied to us. Um, it can use different kinds of middleware, middleware meaning the actual algorithms or the, the um, computer vision code that takes the basic information which is coming from the input device, the 3D image, and tries to uh, and extract high level data like um, user segmentation or skeleton tracking or all the code that actually tracks me and allows the application to easily um, follow my movements and react accordingly. So it will work with any middleware um, and it works on a variety of platforms. So we already have a pretty big uh, online community of OpenNI developers. This is 2,000 plus, but I think today we have around 3,500 uh, developers. And there are thousands of applications online. I mean, if you look, some of them are Kinect hackers that have migrated into our platform. Uh, if you look at YouTube, it's filled with um, videos of people doing uh, cool and uh, creative stuff with the sensor and with the technology. Also, some are making commercial games and applications. Um, if you stop over, or if you stopped over by our booth, we are showing some of them. Um, and if we have time, we'll show you a movie compiling some of the best. So, for this demonstration, I will be showing how easy it is to make a very simple game uh, using this technology. I'll be using Unity, which is a, a game engine. It's very simple, but you can use whatever um, uh, tools that you're, you're familiar with. Any tool that can uh, run code from DLLs will work with uh, OpenNI. Unity is just was the fastest thing for me to, uh, to learn. So I'll just load it up. One second. So um, just a few words. I'm in PrimeSense. I'm, I had one of the teams responsible for UI research and um, looking for new ways of interaction and coming up with the um, a user experience for the sensor. So I'm not really a game developer. So if I could do this, I mean, obviously, I'm sure it would be much more easier for you. So I want to start creating my game. So I think a, a good place to start would be to give um, the player or the user a sense of um, what the sensor is seeing and where he is in the world. So we, when you install OpenNI, you get a bunch of, uh, we, we provide a Unity wrapper. Um, and you get a bunch of um, uh, scripts and objects that make it easier for you to um, create your application or game. So I'll just create uh, a game object that will hold all of the sensor stuff. We can call it sensor or something. And I'll add, I'll just drag something called a depth map viewer. 
which shows me uh, what the sensor is seeing. And I'll also add um, a radar, which shows the different players in the scene and where they are uh, related to each other and to the sensor. So just before using the radar, I need to add something called a user tracker. So we have three things that I added. Um, a depth map viewer, which is just a view of what the sensor is seeing of the 3D image. A user tracker, which is an algorithm that is able to detect people. And a radar, which is just, just a visual a box showing where the people are. So I'll just run it. It'll give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. So if you look at the bottom right of the screen, so this is what the sensor is seeing. This is me. So if I'm playing a game, and I can see myself. If I fix the screen. So I can see myself. I can know when I'm inside the screen and when I'm outside the screen. Um, yeah, I forgot to connect the radar. That's why it's not working. So with Unity, you only need to drag and drop. I don't know how many of you actually use it. But it's, that's it. Now it's all connected. I'll just run this again. And now as I move around, you see that one, that means I'm the first user that is seeing. And if someone else, <laughs> sorry, if someone else will join me, then now it's detecting two people. And I mean, you can do whatever you want with this. You can use personalized icons. It doesn't have to look like this. You can, you can actually show avatars. Um, you can react according to the amount of people in the field, like move, switch automatically from single player to multiplayer. Um, okay, so we have a, uh, we, we've given the user a basic understanding of um, the scene and where he is. Now we want to actually put him inside the game. So I'll create an avatar of me uh, to use inside the game. So I'll just create another game object. I'll call it the avatar of me. Um, maybe I'll even give it some height. So I'll create now a few objects that will represent my body. So I'll create three spheres. So these spheres will be for my head and my two hands. And I'll create a few uh, cubes, uh, which allow, will allow us to easier, easily see that they rotate. And these cubes will be for my shoulders and elbows. So I'll just drag them here. Make a few of them, which will be yeah, see the spelling is gonna be tough. Okay. So I have here just um, a few game objects which are completely out of context, and now I actually want them to represent me. So I'll I'll go here to the um, open an eye side of things, and I'll take something called a skeleton, and I'll drag it onto uh, the avatar. So now if you look here, this is showing me all the different um, uh, joints and parts of my body that the uh, sensor will be tracking. So we have, I think, 14 different points of your body that we're tracking every frame. So that, that gives us a lot of flexibility to create a game that really reacts according to what the, the user is doing. And now with Unity, it's just as easy as connecting the, the joints, I, the objects I created to the correct joints. So I'll just like connect the dots. I'll put the, putting myself in there. So these objects are now uh, connected to the skeleton. And as the skeleton gets updated, they will move inside the world. I need to do one last thing, is take a skeleton controller, which is the thing that will actually uh, translate my movements, sorry, tra translate my movements to the avatar. So I'll just uh, drag this here as well. And now I'll drag the skeleton I created onto it and the user tracker onto it. So again, it's all very easy. You, don't, you need to write only you know, minimal amounts of code. So now I'll just run this and 
pray that it works. So this is me. I'm inside the game world. It's reacting to me. I can also do another uh, neat trick and add to the camera the Unity um, smooth follow script, which gives the camera, causes the camera to follow an object. And if I attach this uh, to my head, so now when I calibrate, I'll have a sort of a third person kind of game. I don't know how many of you are game developers, but this is like a really common camera in games. So now as I move around, the camera is following my back and I can kind of fire at things and, or hit things. Um, so this is a very basic um, and very easy way to um, create an object of the user inside the game. Now you only need to add some interaction or some game mechanic or something fun to do. So I don't know if we have time, it's kind of running out. Um, so I'll just remove this avatar and I'll add another one that I created uh, before, which is very similar to this one. Uh, just it has um, more joints. So if I connect the, um, if I connect it to the skeleton tracker, sorry. If I reconnect this one to our skeleton tracker, then now I should have a full body avatar, which is following my body. It doesn't, if you see on the bottom right, it's not really seeing my legs. That's, a, that's why the legs are jumpy. So maybe if I kind of do this. So this is me inside the game. Now I'll add a few um, very uh, short scripts that I wrote in really 30 minutes. Um, so this, this skeleton that you, you, you saw right now is similar to the one I created before with one difference. We have, I put um, rigid body physics on my hands and legs, which allows them to interact with objects inside Unity. And I also added one very simple script to the uh, hands and legs. You can see it here, it has a very bad name called uh, joint speeder. Well, what it does is just, I'll show you the code. Um, it just calculates the speed of the joint because Unity isn't able to do that for me since the, it's a sensor that's moving the object and not Unity itself. And if I want to hit something, I need to know the velocity in order to translate it to force. So I wrote this very short script. It's only, it's only this. Um, I don't think we have time to go over the code, but you have to trust me that it's really doing nothing. It's just every frame, it's putting the position and time of the joint into a buffer, into a vector. And then when somebody goes and asks for the speed, it just takes everything out, calculates the distance, divides by time, and then you have the speed of that joint. So I'll, in one minute, you'll know why I'm using this. So this is our skeleton. I'm gonna add um, another script that is called a ball creator. So what this, what this game will, will, that we're creating will have is uh, spheres falling from the sky. And my avatar will have to hit them before they uh, get to the ground. So I have this one script that will actually create the spheres. Again, it's doing very little. All it does, every frame, is um, make sure that enough time has passed since the last sphere, so it, because I don't want to be drowned with them. And it puts it in a random position and lets it fall with gravity. And the last um, script that we have is a collider. This is something that th these spheres that are falling down will have. And when something collides with them, what they will do is ask the colliding joint, what is your speed? Translate it to force and then kick the ball away. So I don't know how much any of this made sense because you didn't see the game yet. Um, so I'll just hook it up all now. Um, So what I'm doing is I'm telling this generator of spheres that I want to generate the specific sphere that is able to translate the speed to force. And I want those spheres to fall around the user itself. So I'm connecting it to his body. Um, 
Let me move the camera a little bit further away. And now I hope it works. So I need to calibrate. And now I have these ball falling. And I have to hit them before they reach the ground. And I also have something, one line that calculates um, it's difficult to play when you're looking at two different screens. But um, this is actually pretty fun. I mean, there's something zen meditative with it. Like, I could do this for hours. Um, and I would also personally pay $1 for this, even though I'm giving it away for free on, on the open and eye site. Um, so basically, that's it. That's my game that I created. Um, yeah, we do have a few more minutes. So. I hope that seems simple enough. I don't know, kind of uh, uh, looking at code very fast can seem complicated, but it is super simple. There's nothing to it. It's just to one last time to show you this whole game is three functions. This one, which is a few, I don't know, like 20 lines, and this function, and this. That was the whole thing. And it's, it's really fast and easy to, to create. So this, uh, this is, well, Unity, Unity is this uh, environment for games. And it's, it's mostly drag and drop, but you can write code. And you can write code either in C Sharp. Uh, this is C Sharp. Or you can, use it, you can use Java. It supports both of them. But you don't have to use um, Unity. You can use uh, Ogre. I think the community created uh, wrappers for Ogre. Um, and there are also wrappers for Flash. So you can, make, uh, you can m take your existing games or create new Flash games that are using this technology. Um, but I just like Unity because it's really easy and minimal. Um, do you have any questions about the demo before I talk about the arena? OK. So. You created your game or your application. Um, took you a short amount of time and little money uh, because it's easy. And now you want something to do with it. So we provide something called the OpenNI Arena, which you can find uh, online. And that you can upload your developments to this arena. And um, you will get exposure uh, to other developers who will exchange information and help you and give feedback on your development. Uh, you will see other pub, um, software publishers going to the arena to look for software to publish. Those TV and set up box manufacturers that we were talking about, they will come to our arena to look for content to bundle with their devices. Uh, application stores uh, will look for their killer apps to put in their store. I'll also come to the arena to check which developers uh, exist and what they're doing and which, have, which applications have um, potential um, to be a hit. And you will see some um, exposure for um, actual consumers who are enthusiastic about this technology, like Kinect hackers or other tech-savvy people who will come and see your development. So, Please go to openai.org. You can download all of those tools. And again, they're completely free for commercial use. We don't take any money. As Bob before me said, we use the same model. We make money from the sensor and the chips. So we would like, we support the community and provide free tools. So we will have a lot of content to bring value um, to this market and to this technology. Um, so you can download the tools. Um, you can check out the arena and the, the tens of uh, applications that are al already showcased there. Um, you can get a sensor like this right now uh, online from ASUS. We, we do not sell these uh, directly to the public, I even though I think on OpenNI you can register to get one, but I think there's a long line. So if you want to uh, get them faster, you can just buy them from ASUS on their site. Um, and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and of course, please come to our booth. We have, we're showing some very cool stuff there. We're showing developments from the community, uh, games and all sorts of different applications. And we're showing our uh, new UI user experience for living room control of TV, 
which is uh, super cool. And that's it. Any questions? Yes? Sorry? Well, the Kinect is not compatible because legally the Kinect only works with the Xbox or with Kinect SDK for Windows. Um, so that's it. Ah, yeah, sure. Well, the iPad, unfortunately, does not have a USB input, um, as, all of us, as all of us iPad owners know. Um, so right now, it's powered by USB, so it can't work. And we also have a minimum system requirement, and I'm not sure um, about the iPad hardware. This, the minimum requirement for uh, our middleware is uh, something equivalent to an Intel Atom, which is what's powering netbooks. It's relatively uh, low end and weak. So I don't know about the current iPad, but I'm sure that if we're talking about a, a year or two from now, um, the mainstream uh, ARM uh, or ARM-like uh, CPUs will be powerful enough to run our middleware. Because we, we are targeting to be embedded in TVs and to run on low-end embedded systems. So you do not need a supercomputer to run this. It's actually um, really optimized. Thank you. Thank you.